Did you know that Earth has been recycling water for over 4 billion years? That's right. The water in your glass may have come from the rain just last week, but the water itself has been around pretty much as long as the Earth has. The Earth has a limited amount of water. That water keeps going around and around in what we call the water cycle. How is the water distributed on Earth? Well, about 97% of water comes from the oceans, 2% from the glaciers, 0.9% from underground, and 0.1% from lakes, rivers, and the atmosphere. Regardless of where the water comes from, water can be found in three states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. Heat from the sun causes the temperature of the water in the rivers, lakes, and oceans to rise. When this happens, some of the water evaporates into the air, turning into gas. Plants and trees also lose water to the atmosphere through their leaves. This process is known as transpiration. As warm water vapor floats up high into the sky, it cools and changes back into liquid. Tiny liquid particles form the clouds. This process is called condensation. Pour a glass of cold water on a hot day and watch what happens. Well, water forms on the outside of the glass. That water obviously didn't leak through the glass. Water vapor in the warm air turned back into liquid water when it touched the cold glass. You are looking at a condensation process. When the clouds get heavy, the water falls from the sky as rain, snow, or hail. This is a process called precipitation. The fallen precipitation is then collected in bodies of water such as rivers, lakes, and oceans from where it will eventually evaporate back into the air, beginning the water cycle all over again. Have you ever seen ruptured water pipes in the winter times? Well, this is due to the unusual characteristic of water. Water actually contracts or becomes dense with decreasing temperature when it is at a temperature that is greater than 4 degrees Celsius. Water is actually densest at 4 degrees Celsius. However, between 0 and 4 degrees Celsius, water actually expands as the temperature goes down. In the winter times, as water freezes into ice, it expands towards the closed faucet. Eventually, the pipe ruptures due to the high pressure between the ice and the pipe. So, you may be asking, what is happening to water molecules between 0 and 4 degrees Celsius? Well, as the temperature goes down, water freezes into ice by forming stable, hexagonal, crystal lattice structures. The orientation of hydrogen bonds causes the water molecules to push farther apart. This phenomenon also makes ice less dense than the water around it, which is the reason why ice floats. Perhaps the most striking effect of this phenomenon is the freezing of water in a pond. When water near the surface cools down to 4 degrees Celsius, it is denser than the remaining water and thus will sink to the bottom. This results in a layer of warmer water near the surface, which is then cooled. Eventually, the pond has a uniform temperature of 4 degrees Celsius. If the temperature in the surface layer drops below 4 degrees Celsius, the water is less dense than the water below and thus stays near the top. The ice on top of liquid water provides an insulating layer from winter's harsh exterior air temperatures. Fish and other aquatic life can survive in 4 degrees Celsius water beneath the ice. Finally, how much water do you need to drink every day? A common recommendation is to drink 6 or 8 glasses of water or other fluids every day. However, some adults may need more or less, depending on how healthy they are, how much they exercise, and how hot and dry the climate is. One of the ways to know if you're drinking enough fluid is to look at the color of your urine. If you're drinking enough water, your urine will be clear or pale yellow. Darker yellow means you aren't probably drinking enough water. Well, that's it for today. If you found this video useful, please subscribe and give a like. Thank you for watching.